It's midnight. Let's go shoot some stars. Left the Fairfield Inn in uh, 29 Palms and I'm at Joshua Tree now and I'm gonna shoot stars. And it's always so hard to vlog shooting stars. So I, I don't know how I'm gonna make that happen, if I'm gonna make that happen, or just show you the images after. But I'm at Jumbo Rocks and uh, there's clear skies. Perfect night for this. So I've taken my first photo of the night. I kind of just want to, I'm going to sit on the ground and talk about it, let you guys know what I did, how I made this shot. On the back of the screen, it looks like, uh, it looks perfect. I'm really, really happy with this. I'm thinking it'll probably be a four by five crop, uh, square it off a little bit, kind of kill some of the, uh, kind of the dead areas on the side. But how I made this photo is, it, it didn't take long. I've only been here for four minutes at the most, maybe five minutes. But what I did is I found this tree and this tree over there has just like the perfect setup behind it because it's got the jumbo rocks. I'm at jumbo rocks campground. And the way they bend down is like right into the tree. So the tree has nothing behind it and you can see how big it is. You can see how tall it is. And from a composition standpoint, it's great. Totally unlit. It, it looks silhouetted. It looks nice. It looks really good, but I want to bring out some of the detail in the foreground and in the rocks. So what I did is I pulled out the flashlight on my phone and all I did was stand here directly behind the camera and give one really quick burst. All I did was this, that quick to the foreground of this scene. And then I ran way around to the side of the image and I lit up the whole back. I didn't get any of the foreground or any of the tree to give side light. Anytime you're light painting, you, should, you shouldn't do it from behind the camera or else it can give that fake looking light. It can look really, really fake. So light paint maybe just a quick bit from the foreground and then shoot it at the side. It'll look way, way more natural. And by doing that, I brought out all the detail on the rocks in the background. I brought out this bush in the foreground and the tree as well. And I think it's time to move on to another spot. Image number two. Um, I'm out in this field. There's not a lot of Joshua trees here, which is actually really nice because it allows me to just pick one out. And I did something a little bit different, actually extremely different. As you guys know, one of my clients is SanDisk. I wanted to do something maybe a little bit different for them. I wanted to do something creative. And I had my laptop here and I was working because I was like kind of shooting an exposure, but I also wanted to get some photo editing done at the same time, um, that multitasking life. And uh, I thought, you know what? Let's include this into the image. So I went and sat under the tree with my laptop open lighting me up. Now, at 30 seconds, I'm not super sharp, but it doesn't really matter with an image that's that big, I don't think. And I could do a 15 second exposure at ISO 1600, or at 6400 to improve that, but I'm okay with the way it worked. Yeah, it's it, like really, it's an image that shows the digital nomad lifestyle. Obviously, it's an image for a client, but that's literally what I'm doing. I'm sitting here under Joshua trees, editing as I shoot. Now, making this image wasn't as simple as it might look. It looks like it's just me sitting under the tree. But to do it, I had to have the laptop screen way down or it would blow out my face. And I needed a little bit of light on my foreground so it wasn't just my face. So I actually took my shirt off. Um, yes, I took my shirt off because what I was wearing was this white t-shirt underneath my jacket. And I wrapped this light on my phone up in the jacket like this to soften that light. And I just laid it on the ground in the foreground off to the side to be my foreground light. So sometimes with star photography, you gotta get a little bit crazy, you gotta get a little bit creative, sometimes you gotta take your shirt off.
So I'm really happy with that. I think that three images came out cool, three different images. One of the things about landscape photography is you really have sunset, sunrise, you have very limited time, but with star photography, you have all night. And yeah, it's summer, so the night is short, but in like the winter, you could go all night. You could shoot for like 14 hours, and I think that's really cool. Um, also managed to get a bunch of images edited. So extremely productive. It's now three in the morning. I'm gonna go back home and uh, sleep for three hours, and then we're finishing Route 66 today, heading to Santa Monica. Uh, we're back on Route 66. We've been cruising for like three hours through California and uh, we're like halfway, I think, to Santa Monica. And if you thought just because we're in California, the weird Route 66 stuff is over, you're wrong. We're at a place called the Bottle Ranch where they grill bottles. I've never really been one to understand art. I, I don't know, I always feel like art's kind of just, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. It never has really made sense to me. But it's, it's definitely interesting, at least it's fun wandering through the bottles. Don't understand the art, but it's fun. So maybe that's the point of it all. And uh, time to get back on the road. Early in our Route 66 days, I mentioned that we were gonna follow the route no matter what, right on the original route best we could, even though that meant a lot of times we were driving right, right along the interstate or right along the freeway. Well, today, when we got to San Bernardino, I plugged it into Google to see how far it was, and it said it was about an hour and 10 minutes to Santa Monica Pier. Well, we've gone about three hours driving through like the suburbs to get to about like halfway to Santa Monica. So it looks like we have three more hours to go in these suburbs and I'm regretting this. I'm not regretting the whole trip, but like the sticking to the route thing, it's definitely, definitely time consuming. We made it! Santa Monica Pier, over 2,000 miles, Route 66, the official way. How do you feel? I can't believe it. I think I'm gonna either cry or cry. <laughs> I can't believe I'm here. The way I feel, I really need to pee. So when I did the like cross country New York to LA in 80 hours, it was it was extremely hard. This I thought was gonna be easy, this this challenge, but it ended up being harder than I expected. It was more of a it was more of a slog than I expected, but it was also amazing. And we're here, we're gonna walk around uh, 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 the pier a bit, we're gonna film the sign, um, which is the official end, I guess, oh, is back that way. Yeah. But uh, uh, this is kind of the the spiritual end. So yeah, Santa Monica Pier. It's packed. It's busy. It's sunny. This is awesome. It was really easy for me to describe the end of the big crazy trip, the 80 hours New York to LA that I did, because it was so intense that I had just like, I had no energy left and I, I could kind of let my emotions go free. I don't know how to feel about the end of this trip. Um, so I think I'm gonna like let this dwell <laughs> through the evening and then I'm gonna go back to the hotel. We're gonna go check into our hotel, the Meridian here in Santa Monica, and I think we'll talk there. So we just got we got into the hotel and one new uh, new toy. I'll show you guys that later or maybe tomorrow. We'll see. We're at the Meridian, which is uh, just right on top of Santa Monica, and the room is beautiful and in great style. Awesome, absolutely love it. Thank you, Meridian. They left a gift basket, a bouquet of beer. 
That's, they know me. A bouquet of beer, that's so good. And check this out. Oh no, I don't know how to do this. The view from here right now is unbelievable. Sunset, the pier's just down that way. Okay, I'm back from dinner. I think that's probably too high. Um, I first want to talk about this trip. I did the B versus America trip, which was 80 hours across America uh, with like 10 meetups in 10 locations. And that was crazy, New York to LA. And it was exhausting. It was, it was like next level. This trip too was like, it was more exhausting than I expected. I did less photography than I expected just because I was tired and we didn't have time. I thought that doing this trip, just Chicago to LA, this was a shorter distance in way more time. This was 12 days. I thought I was gonna have so much time to shoot and explore, but you spend so much time driving because it is Route 66, you're not on the freeway. And that was amazing. That was such a good part of the trip. And it's the part that's really like impossible to share on video. It's impossible to show you guys how much fun it was just driving. The whole way, the entire way from Chicago to, uh, to LA, we didn't use Google Maps. We just used this book from this guy named Jerry McClanahan and we just followed it turn by turn and used the maps that he had drawn because it's the only way to do it. It's the only way to stay on the authentic Route 66. So it was intensive. When I was a passenger, I couldn't just be a passenger, I had to navigate. And yeah, it was crazy. It was totally different than I expected. It was way more exhausting than I expected. And um, it was way more rewarding too than I expected. I want to say a massive thanks to the Marriott International, to Marriott International. We stayed at Marriott Brands the entire way. We didn't stay at the same brand the entire time. So we were at Marriott, we were at Ritz Carlton, we were at Fairfield Inn, we were at Spring Hill Suites, we were here in the Meridian. We've basically been in different Marriott related brands the entire trip and that's just been phenomenal um, and awesome. And so massive thanks for them to, for sponsoring the trip. Massive thanks to Nissan for sponsoring the vehicles. I really, really like the Nissan Rogue. The Armada was amazing. It's like a big kind of bulky vehicle, uh, great for families and stuff, but it was too big for me. I love the Nissan Rogue. That was a fun vehicle to drive. And yeah, so thanks to them. And massive thanks to Matt Long from landlopers.com. Be sure to check out his blog. He's been doing daily roundups of the trip. You can check his uh, link below in the description below. Uh, massive thanks to Matt. Matt organized this trip, he invited me along, he pitched me to the clients, and yeah, so that was awesome. Now, another big thanks is to Dell for sending me the new laptop. I had my Dell XPS 15 for, oh, I don't know, two or three years, and I love it, but I've smashed it to bits. Dell just released their 2018 2-in-1, and um, they sent it to me to test and to use and to have. I didn't pay for this laptop, you guys know I'll always be honest with you, but don't tell Dell this either, but even if they didn't send me this laptop, I would have bought it because I need a new one. But don't tell them that because I like having free things. And this laptop is getting totally rave reviews from video editors and photo editors for its speed and functionality. And it's beautiful. People ask me all the time, is it too heavy to carry? Is it too big to carry? When you carry as much stuff as I do and when you travel as much as I do, it doesn't matter. I do not mind the size of this. In fact, if they told me I could have a 17 inch with even more power, I would take that instead. Let's rip this tape away. This is beautiful. And this, this is something that I thought I would never use, but Jody has it on her laptop, and I realize I'll definitely use it, in that it's a two-in-one. So it's a laptop, but it also flips all the way back into a tablet. And I think this would be amazing, maybe not for photo editing, but just on planes to watch movies and stuff like that. I love that I can do that. So massive thanks to Dell. I'm gonna be doing a review on that after I use it. I'm not the type of person to unbox it and be like, hey, it's amazing. No, I wanna test it. I wanna see how quick it is. I wanna see if it's faster than my old Dell XPS 15 um, in editing and stuff like that. I'm on cloud nine. This has been amazing. And um, tomorrow I still have one more episode from Route 66 because as a reward for doing this trip, I get to go whale watching. And I'm stoked for that because I haven't done it since I was about this tall. So that should be a lot of fun. And I'll see you guys there. Peace.